All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Gideon's Tactical. Today, we're going to be doing a full field test and review for you on the brand new 2014 Kershaw Camber, which is basically, in my opinion, a mini blur. That's what we have here today. Very high quality, very cool looking blade. That nose is kind of like a shark nose almost and uh, how it's designed. So uh, yeah, guys, today we're going to go ahead and jump out there. We're going to not only go through all the specs with you and give you all the ratings that we normally do over here, but you'll also see some field testing with this Kershaw camber so you can decide at the end of the video whether or not this is going to be a good purchase for you. So with that being said, let's jump out there and start using this blade. All right, so let's go ahead and look here at the blade itself. Well, we has S30V steel, so very good high-quality steel. Holds a great edge, takes a great edge. You get a real nice saber grind. It's three inches from the handle to the tip. And uh, with that saber grind, it's going to cut through stuff real nice and easy. And it has a great drop point design and then a really nice unsharpened swedge up at the top of the spine. Not too thick, not too thin. Just amazing. Kind of looks like a shark nose, kind of. Just, but just an amazing three inch blade design for those of you looking for EDC, tactical, and even wilderness. Uh, as we're about to see here in just a moment, this is a fantastic overall blade shape and design. All right, guys, let's go ahead and test out this camber here when it comes to cardboard. Thus, this will be the first cutting test we do today. I've already used it some, and you can see here, very impressed with that. Very mild, almost full flat grind. It's a saber grind, but uh, you know, almost a full flat grind. Doing a fantastic job here. That S30V is gonna do a great job holding an edge as you go through the cardboard. So EDC cardboard cutting is phenomenal. I love it, perfect blade size for all those type of tasks. Very, very good for cardboard cutting and EDC use in the sense of opening cardboard packaging with your Kershaw camber. Very, very impressed with that overall blade shape and capability. All right, so with wood cutting, you can absolutely do that after cardboard. You can use this as a backpacking, hiking, you know, type of pocket knife you want, particularly with that S30V, guys. The S30V steel is holding a fantastic edge. It's easy to resharpen, and it's easy for it to hold a really long edge, a lot better than the Sandvik steel that uh, they use, as well as any of the ATR13MOV steel you'd be getting with your Kershaws. And then even stabbing tasks. For a 3-inch knife, this can definitely do your stabbing tasks. Not only is the blade design and tip strong enough, up they can do really good stabbing and penetrating but also that finger guard acts as a great lockup to keep it in place then rope cutting obviously it's going to do a fantastic job with that good sweep up you don't need any sort of serrations no matter how you do it and how you you know cut through your nylon rope and paracord and stuff it's going to do a great job with that really good edge and relief edge on this camber so ultimately guys any sort of edc task you may be looking for this knife to do it's going to be able to do that and it's a fantastic blade shape and that s30v steel is going to hold a fantastic edge and take a fantastic edge when you're using this knife all right guys let's go ahead and look here at the ergonomics and i'll give you my ergonomic rating here on the camber now it has a four inch blade I mean, excuse me, a four inch handle, and my hands are size large. I wear large size gloves. I say that a lot here on our videos, but that kind of gives you guys a plumb line. If I go to the store, I'm going to buy large size gloves. You can see here that when I'm holding the knife, it feels very good in my hand. My pinky's not wanting to come off at all. It's very locked and, you know, secure in there. I can get a full grip on it. It is 6061 anodized aluminum, aircraft grade aluminum, basically, and then it has the Tech Track traction inlays kind of similar to kind of like a rubberized grip tape almost the exact same stuff they use on the kershaw blur you're gonna get that on the front on the back and on the front right here so it gives you a little bit of traction then you got that finger guard right there that acts as a really good you know kind of lock in there no jimping along the top at all but that's okay this is definitely designed to be an edc blade and it weighs in at 3.7 ounces so good lightweight under four ounces so that's very good so overall guys i'm going to give it a rating of five out of five i have zero complaints with the ergonomics whatsoever there's nothing that i complain about no real hot spots no issues no uncomfortability just a very simple design great for edc use and is going to feel really good in your hands regardless of what size you wear and it's just going to be able to stay in there particularly with those traction you know inlays that they give you and uh, it's just going to be a very ergonomic five out of five when it comes to the camber and how it feels in your hand. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look here at the pocket clip. I gotta give you my carry options and the rating for the carry options here on this blade. 
So what they have here is a tip up only, which is awesome. That's the way I love to carry my blades. Tip up only loop over design pocket clip. And I love it. I got to tell you, I love this pocket clip much better design than the old school Kershaw blur. You can see here, it's going to ride. It's going to have almost an inch, you know, three fourths of an inch sticking up out of your pocket. This sucker, no way. The camber is going to be riding very, very deep. That very good loop over design. Love that a lot. Doesn't stick out or flare out at all. Very, very nice. Blacked out, you know, so no one's going to really see it. Goes all the way up basically to the handle. It is ambidextrous. You can switch it and put it in for lefties. So that is awesome. And uh, I just really like the ride, guys. Even as you can see here, you know, riding in my pants, you won't even know that you're carrying the, the camber. And it's very easy for you to pull it out, deploy it, use it, put it back into place. No one's even going to know. And just very unobtrusive and a very deep ride, which I love. That little traction that they give you right here is very easy for you to grab with your thumb and then pull it out of your pocket. You do not get that if you swap the pocket clip if you're a lefty. You will just have you know slick aluminum and then you'll have the traction underneath your pocket clip basically. So uh, sorry about that. I don't know why Kershaw, it would have been nice if Kershaw had done that, but uh, you know, it is what it is. At least you get to swap the pocket clip, you lefties out there. For us righties, it's going to be even better because we get the traction to pull it out of the pocket even faster. And then they give you a hidden lanyard post right there. So you can feed your paracord right through that little post right there and then uh, make a lanyard if you so desire and you're into the lanyards. So overall rating for the carry options here on the Kershaw Camber, what do you think? Five out of five because it's awesome. It's right hand, left hand, so ambidextrous, super deep ride. It's not gonna fall out of your pocket. They give you a lanyard hole. I mean, it's it's a home run. Five out of five on the likability of the carry options and my rating for the carry options here, five out of five on the Kershaw Camber. Alrighty, how about deployment? We're gonna go ahead and look here at the deployment real quick so you can kind of see how this sucker works. No thumb studs on either side there, unlike the blur. The, the blur has thumb studs and no finger flipper. This has a finger flipper. You can see there it's got a nice little row of jimping there. Very easy for you to grab. It protrudes up enough so you can easily engage it, but it's not you know ginormous and starts to kind of get cumbersome. So I really like that a lot. Very easy for you to gr get a good grab with your finger. And then all you have to do is push because it is a speed safe with their torsion bar system. Whips out just like any other Kershaw with a speed safe. Very quick. You know, no complaints there really whatsoever. I'm starting to become more of a manual guy. Uh, you know, I pref I think I'm, you know, kind of becoming more of, I prefer manuals over open assist blades, but I've had so many Kershaws and they seem to work well and I haven't had really any issues whatsoever. And it's very easy to not only disengage the blade with that liner lock, put it away, but then again, flip it open very easily. And that'll also help and aid with those people who are ambidextrous because there aren't any thumb studs for you to worry about and whether or not they line up or if they give you one on the right side or left side or anything like that. So very easy, very good deployment there with the speed safe and the finger flipper on the camber. All right, guys, I want to talk to you here briefly about not only the quality and give you my quality rating on this blade, but also just show you the liner lock and centering that goes into the quality. So what you can see here is perfect centering, and I've used this a lot, used it a ton, and I believe I see brass or bronze bushings down in there, definitely not nylon from uh, what I checked earlier in the day. So you're getting good quality washers in there that's going to help keep it centered, dead center down the middle, so that's real nice. Then when you deploy the blade, you can see there, Really nice liner lock. You can easily grab it and disengage it if you need to. Then you open it up again. And uh, as you can see, it hits the entire uh, liner lock goes in and engages about 40% of the blade right there. So it's not, I know it looks a little weird in the on the camera, but if you're holding it, uh, the entire liner lock is engaged behind that spine, and I'm not worried about it collapsing on me. You know, I've done some stabbing tests and other things like that, and it is held up fine. And in fact, compared to the S30V Blur, you can see here that the camber liner lock is actually a little bit thicker than the liner lock on the S30V Blur. So they've upgraded the liner lock on this camber over the S30V Blur. So that's awesome that it has an even thicker uh, liner lock there. So in overall quality, guys, the quality is amazing. I'm going to give it a five out of five. You're getting good, high quality S30V steel. The lockup and lineup is perfect. You know, the, the open assist with the speed safe open assist works great 
I love the blade design. The fit and finish is perfect. And for basically under $100, you're getting an S30V blur. I mean, an S30V blade, which is very impressive. It's pretty hard to get S30V without getting really close to $100. And so for under $100, bucks, you can get that and get it with really good quality, U.S. made. I mean, nothing, zero complaints, high quality, 5 out of 5 on the quality rating here on the Kershaw Camber. All right. Let's go ahead and run in here the Kershaw Blur in S30V. From everything I understand, that's basically what the camber was designed to do is basically give us a three inch blur for those of you particularly that live in states or cities, you know, where they require a smaller blade length than the 3.25 on the blur itself. So uh, you can see here the handle construction, very similar, the 6061 aluminum with the traction inlays very similar on both. You're only gonna get about a half an inch uh, shorter on the handle of the camber. The camber's gonna be four inches and the blur, I believe, is four and a half inches. So half inch shorter on the handle. The blur weighs in at four ounces, this S30V model, and my camber weighs in at 3.7 on my scale. So very similar in weight. Then the S30V, exactly the same for both. You can see there a little bit of the recurve with the blur, not so much with the camber, very classic design there with the camber, but they're both gonna have that kind of modified saber grind, definitely not a hollow grind, it's not quite a full flat grind either. And they both have kind of that unsharpened swedge up top on both. And the camber is gonna have that three inch blade, the blur is gonna have that 3.25 inch blade. So very similar in all of these different ways. The pocket clips, I'll flip these over real quick. The pocket clips is one of the biggest notifications and things that you can notice that I really like the camber's pocket clip a lot better than the blur's. It just rides a lot better. That was one of my big complaints with the blur is that the pocket clip just doesn't ride very well in comparison. But other than that, I mean, these blades are amazing. So you got to ask yourself, okay, which one do you prefer? And particularly over here at Gideon's Tactical, uh, I'm going to be honest with you because they're right around the same price. I bet you the camber will come down and probably be about... $5 in my opinion once they become more available, maybe $5 cheaper than the S30V Blur that you see here in front of you. Uh, out of these two, I would prefer rocking the camber. It's just a little bit smaller and uh, you know that pocket clip really does a lot for you. Other than that, there's not you know, a whole lot of difference. And in fact, in some ways, the camber is actually going to be a better stabbing instrument. If you are looking for that kind of semi-tactical, uh, you know, that finger guard right there that acts as the finger flipper is going to be a lot better traction than what you're getting on the blur with nothing. So if you are looking for something, you know, that can, you know, last ditch, you know, effort, and you have that requirement of three inches in the state you live or city you live in, this would be a fabulous, you know, backup tactical blade, you know, God forbid, not recommended, and I am not a knife fighter, but that's what you're looking for. It does have those capabilities, even more so in my opinion sometimes than the blur does. And then again, like the pocket clip, everything else we've talked about, really impressed overall. And out of these two, for right around the same price, I would recommend going with the camber first. And then if you want to upgrade to the uh, S30V blur later on. So uh, that's just my opinion as we kind of roll in these two blades side by side, just kind of give you some perspective. And, you know, they're so similar in so many different ways, price point, steels, handle construction, you know, speed safe on both, liner locks, I mean, everything about them, weight, so similar. So, guys, I hope that this side-by-side uh, -side has helped you out a little bit with your purchasing decisions when it comes to the S30V Blur or the S30V Camber. All right, guys, as we were just talking a moment ago with the Kershaw Blur S30V in the shot, I wanted to wrap this up by talking about the value. The value rating is going to be a 5 out of 5 on this camber because for right around $70, that's what I paid for it on Amazon was $70. bucks. i have seen it anywhere from $80 to $70, you know, probably right around that price point. And when it calms down and becomes a more, you know, popular item and it becomes more available, it may even go down, I think, to probably right around $65 to $70 bucks. for that price point. You know, you're getting U.S. made, you're getting S30V high quality steel. You're getting all the things that we've talked about throughout this video. And I think for that money that you're laying down right around $70, you're getting a fantastic value in the product of the Kershaw Camber. So the Kershaw Camber gets a value rating over here, five out of five. You're definitely not getting ripped off. It's definitely a very good bang for your buck with a very high quality item at a very reasonable price of around 70 bucks. So five out of five on the quality, excuse me, on the value rating on the Kershaw Camber. 
All right, everyone. So as we bring this review to a close, I got to give you my overall likability for this knife. My overall likability rating is five out of five. Duh. It's basically a mini blur and I love my S30V blur. So now you're just getting a smaller version of it. And in some ways, and in my opinion, actually, I would recommend this purchasing this over the S30V blur first, purchase, purchase this item first. Then if you want to get the S30V blur later, cool, knock yourself out. But I mean, I, I like how the pocket clip is a better ride. I like the finger guard that actually gives me a little better protection if I did have to do any sort of stabbing tasks and it's just you know more difficult for me to slide up on the blade I love the blade shape and uh, right now you know it's a little more than the S30V blur on Amazon but I'm sure as you know it becomes more available prices will basically level out to probably right around the same price so you know for the same price as an S30V blur I'd say pick up the camber first because of the likability of five out of five and then later on if you want the S30V blur knock yourself out but guys I love 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 this EDC blade this is my favorite 2014 EDC blade from Kershaw it is a phenomenal knife and highly recommend it over here Gideon's Tactical. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching this particular episode of Gideon's Tactical. Please subscribe, comment, like the videos, share the videos, and check out our Facebook page. You can find it on the YouTube homepage of Gideon's Tactical. Like our Facebook page where you'll get updates of upcoming videos. Uh, you'll get photos as well as upcoming gear, new gear releases, you know, that products and companies that uh, are released, as well as behind the scenes footage and bloopers that you'll never see make it to YouTube. So thanks so much for watching everyone. Stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.